like to thank the Academy for uh, electing me. It's a great honor. And I also like to thank all the organizers for inviting me to deliver my lecture. So I'm going to take you to the Palo world. So as, uh, as you are aware that I, I come from Birbal Sani Institute of Palo Sciences. And uh, this institute uh, is an autonomous institution under the Department of Science and Technology. Institute was established in 1946 by Professor Birbal Sahani to carry out paleobotanical studies. And recently, the name of the institute has been changed from paleobotany to paleosciences in order to broaden its uh, research areas and also to, to strengthen the paleobotanical studies by combining it with other areas of paleosciences. So now the scientists of this institute, they are now studying uh, the drivers impacts and processes to provide models to understand past climate and biota, past civilizations and to understand the contemporary environmental issue in order to increase the credibility of future climate change projections. So topic of my talk is the Indian plate as a museum and evolutionary cradle for tropical angiosperms. We all know the angiosperms they are highly advanced and very diversifying, diversified co community and they are also known as flowering plants. So when did they evolve? So they evolved at the time when around 230 billion year time span in during uh, late Triassic time period in the northern hemisphere. But these were not true angiosperm because there were some characters were missing and so the scientists they, they thought that they are not true angiosperms. From 230 million year to up to 120 billion year, there is a gap of time. Big, uh, we couldn't see any any good angiosperm records, probably because uh, because this was a time period because there were a lot of arid areas, desert desert areas were present in the in the uh, globally, and we all know that angiosperms they are moisture loving plants. So probably this could be the reason they could not diversify during that time period. From 120 million year, from around 120 million year, we see the first records of true angiosperms, and lay, from whole of Cretaceous time period, we see the sudden radiation and proliferation of angiosperm. So we can say that angiosperm they came very late and in in geological time span as compared to ferns and gymnosperms. But once they arrive, they completely wi completely wiped out all the other type of vegetation that they. They, uh, they were present in all over the globe. So we can say angiosperms, they are the most species rich and ecologically diverse amongst the plant ecosystem. So the two terms uh, in the topic of uh, my talk, the cradle of uh, biodiversity and museum of biodiversity need to be distinguished. So cradle of biodiversity is uh, uh, known as the, the area which has high origi origination rates of biota. Whereas the Museum of Biodiversity is considered as the area which has high biodiversity of ancient lineages due to low extinction rate. So presently we can say that cradle of biodiversity and museum biodiversity lies in the tropical zone. And so is this the thing uh, in the past also? No. In the past we see that the, this, uh, this latitudinal diversity pattern in deep geological time period was very different. In deep geological time period, there were no ice caps on the both the poles, and so we can see that there are the tropical bed extended towards from tropical areas to high latitudinal and polar region also. So the we can we see that the, the, the uh, latitudinal diversity was very flattened at that time, but as compared to present day, it is very steep because the temperature difference between the pole and equator is also very steep. And, and accordingly, the diversity is also very steep. So these are the t three, uh, five time period in the geological time span to see the angiosperm records, the fossil records of angiosperms. As I just said that uh, in around 225 million year, there were very less records they appeared uh, uh, in the world. And later on, at a, around 120 million year also, we don't see any much records of angiosperms. But around 120 million year, the angiosperm started appearing in the tropical zone, and you can see the number of records are here. And by Cenobanian time period, that is 95 million year time span, you see a large number of angiosperm records all over the globe. And this was the time period also when the, all the continents started drifting from each other. 
and you can see the India was at the very high latitudinal position and by menstruation time period then we have a large number of angiosperm records are all over the globe and these records are also showing their affinity with the present day angiosperm flora. India was moving towards north and it has not reached to the northern hemisphere. So, we can say the plate tectonic movement also aided in the dispersal and evolution of angiosperms. What happened in India at around 120 million as I just said India was in the very high latitudinal position about 40 degrees south and uh, there are very less records of angiosperm we see during this time period. But as India moved towards further north and it came in contact with the tropical zone we see a number of angiosperm records started appearing. Around uh, from 65 billion years that is the Cretaceous tertiary boundary interval and for, for uh, till about 50 million year time span we see a huge huge number of angiosperm records started appearing on Indian plate. India was just like an island and is the, at this time most of the tropical species both plant and animal they, 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 they evolve and diversify on Indian subcontinent. Later on when Indian plate started uh, for move further north and collided with the Asian plate and during Miocene time the Himalayas were uplifted. The climatic condition this was very humid this was a tropical climate uh, we also call it, call it as a per humid climate. This per humid climate changed to a seasonal climate and most of these tropical forms what we saw at that time they, they, they declined they completely wiped out from the Indian subcontinent. So, we can say that uh, Indian plate acted as a evolution, evolutionary cradle for tropical biodiversity. So, let us see the what happened in uh, the records of fossil records from where we get the fossil records. This is the area which is in Rajasthan area close to Thar desert. These are the lignite mines where we, where, where we see large number of uh, fossil records of tropical nature and uh, both uh, Kutch, Kambe and Rajasthan they have very very, very large uh, lignite mines are there and they are very rich in flora and fauna. What not you see all kinds of insects were present, vertebrates, invertebrates, pollen records, leaf, woods, whatever. So, it, it is very different what we see today. So, let us see that uh, when, we, when we compare them with a living uh, entity we find this kind of scenario. These are the lemurs which were present in India at one time, but now they are only confined in Madagascar. These are the tapis which are found, one species is found in South, uh, Southeast Asia, otherwise it is confined to South America, but the, they were present in India at that time. Similarly, these are, these are Dipteroca forests, Sal forests which I am going to talk about later on. And these are the Myristicaceae, this is a nutmeg family which, which provide you um, uh, Jaiful Javitri. It is confined to South uh, Western Ghats in India and at that time it was present in Rajasthan area which is a desert area now. So, you can see the kind of diversity was present at that time in India when India was in the tropical zone and in the equatorial zone. So, many of these forms uh, which are no longer present in India, they were present at one time. So, we can say the endemism which is now endemism, at that time it was, there was no endemism. The endemism is a, is a very recent phenomenon. So, we wanted to find out the pollen fossils which we are getting at 55.5 million year time, uh, time, time period in these lignite mites. We wanted to see uh, whether they uh, they belong they, they belong to any living entity whether there is any comparison with that and we found that they are showing similarity with the flora of present which is which is present in southern western ghat area so we collected fossils from these lignite mines and we also collected uh, fossils from these southern western ghats to compare our data what is the peculiarity of the southern western ghat area if we consider a uh, mean annual rainfall condition, so this area is, uh, is very very wet area, it receives more than 500 millimeter rainfall. But if we consider the duration of rainfall, then this area is very wet area and most of this, this uh, the population 
both plant and animal which is uh, present in this area. It is a very, very old uh, lineage. It is also known as Gunwana uh, relic forest. And our fossil records, they compare very well with this type of uh, population. And because these, uh, the plants and animals which are growing here, they show endemism also. And uh, they are so much accustomed to this type of environment, environmental condition that they are not, no longer, they cannot move upward towards north. And because from three sides it is uh, surrounded by ocean, so this vegetation, this particular biotope is still surviving as a, as a, as a uh, Gondwana relic forest. So, uh, Indian plate uh, also acted as a main driver for establishment of tropical rainforest community in Southeast Asia. And so, we have developed this uh, area, this research that we found that large number of fossils in India. And we know that uh, the lowland dipteroka, which is sal forest, is one of the most complex, dense and species rich tropical forests in, in the world. It is found in this Southeast Asia. So, if we want to see, if we see the distribution of this family, we see there is one genera and one species found in South America, one genera, two species are found in uh, Africa, uh, one uh, found in Madagascar, one in Seychelles, about eight in Southern Western Ghat and about ten in Sri Lanka and huge, huge number about uh, 13 genera and 500 species are found in, in uh, Southeast Asia. So, the obvious explanation is that this family must have evolved here. The people they have said, there a lot of work has been done on this aspect and this family must have evolved here and migrated to other places. But no, we found the fossil records in Africa. Uh, around 70 million year uh, time period, we found its record in Africa and we also found a large number of pollen fossil of this family in these lignite mines of India around uh, 63 to 52 million years. And if you see the uh, fossil records from Southeast Asia, they are, they come from ar around 32 million years or 23 million years, which is very recent compared to these. So, we, these are the pollen fossil records, pollen fossils which we have found, these are about 63 to 52 million year old and you can see the preservation, they are so well preserved. So, we found almost each and each genera of this family in India at that, at that time and so we combined the morphological data of these pollen fossils, we combined the morphological data of extant species and we also combine the molecular data, DNA data of this uh, different species of this family and we come up with this uh, the evolutionary tree and that tells us that the family originated in seasonal climate of Africa around 102 billion year and the family dispersed from Africa to India via Kohistan, Ladakh, around 70 million year. Most of the, the forms which uh, on uh, uh, Shoria, Vatica and other, other uh, genera of this family had their roots in Africa, but they diversified in the per humid climate of Indian plate when Indian plate was in equatorial zone for a brief uh, period during Eocene time interval. The family migrated from India to Southeast Asia post India Asia collision where it completely adapted to wet and humid climatic condition and the rapid boom in the diversification of the family took place around 20 million years in Southeast Asia, where it gave rise to a very dense tropical lowland dipteroka prain forest. So, this tropical dipteroka forest is also very important because it is a timber producing uh, community also, it provides the, the shelter to many, many plant and animals and it is about 80 percent is dominated by this family and which the family was originated in Africa, diversified in India and migrated to, uh, later on uh, migrated to Southeast Asia, Asia and where it is now developing as a rainforest. So, this is the Indian plate when it started moving towards north, it came in contact with these island chains. These are small island chains known as Kohistan Ladakh Ark, Ark Plateaus and uh, they were also connected with Africa and through that uh, the most of the tropical uh, lineages, they, they, uh, they dispersed from Africa to India. And later on when Indian plate collided with Asia, 
uh, this this uh, this uh, Ladakh plateau they were subducted or consumed between the collision zone, and then uh, later on that uh, many of these forms the, these clades the tropical clade they were transferred to Southeast Asia. Not only the plants, there are many, many uh, animal uh, data, animal uh, system. They also found the similar dispersal route as uh, we have found for this particular family. So, this paper was published uh, in Science uh, this year, this January. Uh, Mahi Bansal is my PhD student, and uh, we have uh, developed this model. So, coming to my next, uh, this is the another study we have developed that is the Indian fossil, they can also help in tracing the biogeography of tropical angiosperms. So, this is one particular family, this is family Ericaceae, which is found in tropical, mainly tropical region and this family also known as palm family. So, one particular tribe, one particular subfamily of this uh, family is uh, Moritini. Moritini is found only in nowadays it is found in a South American Caribbean island, but during paleo time, during deep time it was found in Africa, also in India. But how come that uh, uh, it is not found in Southeast Asia? Because, uh, because this family, uh, this family was present in Cretaceous time period both Africa and, and, and South America. In paleo scene time it was transferred to uh, to India through Kohistan Ladakh, but uh, later on during Eocene time inter because of uh, reasons we do not know much about, uh, it was wiped out from India and th this is one of the reason why it could not be transferred to Southeast Asia because India Asia collision took place later on. By, the time, by, the, by this time this family was completely wiped out from India. From Africa also it wiped out because in Africa the later during Miocene time period uh, the aridity was very high and so now this family is residing only in South America. So, with the help of fossil data, with the help of fossil data from India, we can de develop large number of biogeographic analysis. So, we have also done uh, uh, some work on the, uh, 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 early early records of grasses. So, we have found the early records of grasses, early fossil records. These are the phytoliths, uh, these are silica particles which are very distinctive in shape in grasses. We found them in dinosaur dung and uh, on the basis of that till that uh, the uh, grasses were not said to be evolved uh, during this time period. They were uh, said to be evolved at uh, much younger time about 32 million years ago. So, with this help, with, the, with this data, we can say the grasses evolved much earlier and India was this place where the grasses first evolved. So, we also uh, the, the scientists, so scientists they have found that there are few mammals uh, which are known as Gonwana Thera mammals, they were having teeth adapted to eating a very abrasive kind of food material. But this study was going on for since ages. So, with the with the with the uh, this uh, grass evolution, we can say the co-evolutionary interaction between grasses and grazers may have greater antiquity than previously believed. So, we have also find, found wild rice was present in 65 million year old uh, uh, record in India, and this discovery of rice phytolid not only pushes the clock back on the evolution of rice crop, but also that India could be the place of its origin more than 65 million years ago. So, there is a lot of hue and cry between debate between India and China. They say that uh, rice uh, was first uh, evolved in, uh, in China and uh, India says that, but we, we can very authentically very, very uh, we can very, uh, we can say that India was the place where the rice was evolved. Maybe domestication must have taken place in uh, China first. So, with this work, uh, this holistic approach of integrating multiple disciplines of ranging from paleobiology to molecular biology would address the issues of impact of climate change on species distribution and their habitats, phylogenetic relationship of extinct and extant lineages, predicting speciation and extinction in response to historical processes and conservation measures of species by taking into account of evolutionary and ecological aspect. So, we can predict the speciation and ex extinction of fauna and flora in response to past geological events. We can also predict the, predict the impact of past climate on diversification of flora and fauna. 
So, with this I end my talk here. Uh, this is a very vibrant uh, small group of uh, people working on uh, plant biogeography, Mahi Bansal. Uh, she is my PhD student, Shali Parma, Rumya Shukla and uh, Gaurav Shivasta and these people. Thank you so much. Now, this is a really fascinating talk. What is happening in the central Indian uh, uh, flora I in all this time? What is happening in central, central India? Area? Because uh, central India was uh, during uh, Deccan time, uh, at KT time, there was a lot of volcanic activity was, take, uh, was taking place. Uh, but uh, this volcanic activity was not continuous. There were episodes of. So, when the during uh, like one after one activity, then there was a succession of uh, like uh, no activity. During that time period, there are a lot of flora and fauna that is developed there. And then later on, after another volcanic activity, they are all buried in the, this basalt. Mm. So, you can go and see that uh, different places in, in Mahabali, Mahabaleshwar and all those. There, the intertrapian localities, they are containing a lot of these evidences. Uh, I, I read somewhere that the transitional fossils of uh, non-vascular to vascular plants are also to be found in the uh, central Indian landscape. Uh, is that, that is a very old, uh, that is a Permian time, into hmm. Permian hmm. time. That is uh, at that time the Glossopteris flora that was, uh, was very, very prominent and most of the coal what you s get uh, uh, from uh, central India that comes from that. So, there is a, but there is a uh, like uh, some characters they tell us about that the, this vegetation was uh, not tangiosperms, it was a mostly the fern kind of uh, yeah, vegetation yeah. was That's there. Yeah. yeah, so we can study that. Yeah. Um, I was wondering about uh, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands with regard to dipterocarps. Andaman and Nicobar Island, they came very uh, late around uh, some Miocene time interval because uh, before that it was uh, most of the, they were under, under the sea. So, later on when uh, most of this, these, these dipteroca were diversifying in the Southeast Asia, at the same time they also colonized in, in uh, Andaman and Nicobar area. So, did you say that uh, between uh, 230 and 120 million years, there were no angiosperms, that there was no evidence of angiosperms? There are records, but they are so scanty, the rudimentary, that it is difficult to say that they are uh, true nature of angiosperms. They were there. Is it lack of record or is there any reason why they would not exist? They were, they were, the lack of records is also there and also they are not well preserved because the conditions were not so congenial for the preservation of the fossils. True, touched in the last line. I mean part of the reason is the third desert being the desert that it is, that things are so well preserved, is that correct? Mm. The things that you find in the, in the name Ignites. Ignites, yes, said, yes, yes. I forget the name. Yes. But the fact that all these fossils were so well preserved Yes. Was because of the desert. No, uh, no, no, not because of what desert. What is the reason the, why the, they are there so well? Yeah, I'm just the, the reason for their preservation is that, that because uh, the rapid burial, the, when they were getting deposited at the time, the, the sea level was, uh, the, was high hmm. and uh, there were sediments were coming. Mm -hmm. the, the sediments, very rapidly the sediments getting buried, so it does not uh, give time for degradation. So, the rapid burial was one of the reason for that and for that the geodynamic uh, movement of the earth. That was kind of an accident that this has uh, happened that we have things there in, preserved. Yeah, it is because of the interplay of various factors, sea level fluctuation, then the sediment carrying capacity and the preservation, so all these things. Thanks. Ha Hello ma'am, could you please tell me about the uh, invasion of the invasive plants, the evolution? Invasive plants like Parthenium and uh, all that. Invasive plants. Yes, ma'am. Invasive plants, yeah, of course, we can say that uh, when uh, these plants from Africa, they were, uh, they, they uh, dispersed to India, they were inv invasive plants. And because you see that Indian plate was moving from north to, uh, sorry, from south to north. So, it was uh, going from very seasonal climate, very dry climatic condition to a very wetter type 
kind of climatic condition. So, the biotope was a, which was present on Indian subcontinent was uh, not very uh, congenial for uh, to develop in the tropical zone. So, it was a one way dispersal the, from Africa the things they were coming to India and from India it was not going to Africa. So, that is how. So, invasive uh, plants are many and at different time span the, this invasive uh, invasiveness takes place and this uh, if they, they, they get the opportunity, if they get the ecological opportunity to, to diversify, they flourish otherwise they do not. Excellent talk. Uh, apart from uh, the what you have told, the India is basin with the largest population more than the continent. We have similarly other natural museums and uh, mineral museums and uh, like ammonites, Ariel or Cretaceous, Tamil Nadu. So, there are a lot of other places, you know, similar uh, examples with fossil yes. evidences and minerals and fossils. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, more than that, we have to conserve these uh, ancient uh, lineages. We can preserve the things in the museum or um, herbariums, but it is more important that uh, whatever like uh, biotope we are having in different regions of the country, they need to be preserved because they may later on they can uh, help in developing another type of uh, vegetation or plants. Just one uh, clarification from me, you just at the end uh, talked about rice, India and China claims. Yes. Uh, from the available evidence, whether yes. the scientist uh, will be able to give answers? Uh, about the… Uh, about the rice origin of India and uh, China. There are two issues. One is the domestication of rice. So, domestication of rice is also taken place in India around 7000 BC. And domestication of rice has taken place in China around 8000 BC. So, there is a lot of thing like uh, the molecular biologist and fossil, uh, they have to come together in order to develop this model. The problem is that, that when you publish, want to publish something, uh, we, we could publish in current science. We were uh, like, uh, could not publish that domestication of rice took place at 7000 year B BC because it was, um, it went to like uh, to people and they rejected that. Maybe so evidence, that's evidences uh, are… Uh, evidences made. are there. If you, because the, the kind of uh, uh, ecological conditions they were present in India for, the, for the growth of rice. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.